Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are asking the question of what makes you so attractive? This is a pick a card reading. So you get to pick the card, number, object, and you use your intuition to do that. I've got the timestamps down below. You go there and then I use my intuition to read the cards for you. So a couple of things. This is probably a little bit more esoteric than my other What Makes You Attractive readings. I'm using the Starseed Oracle, so it kind of points it into that direction. If you identify as a Starseed or a light worker, this is probably going to be very beneficial to you. If you're not, un if you're uncomfortable with those terms, then maybe one of my other attractive readings would be better suited for you. But that's up to you. You decide. Um, I'm also using charms in this reading. So as we pull cards, I've got like four different decks that I'm using, then I will pull charms at the end of the reading to confirm things. And it's so interesting to me anyway, how those things get confirmed. All right, so I think I've done all of the explanation. Let's put some objects here on these cards. So for group number one, this object is Obdurite. So I'm just moving it around in the light here so that hopefully you can see the flash on it. That's what that's called when you get that flash of blue or gold. Group number two. This is Septerian um, or new, new Jade. I've been referring to it as Jade, but I guess it's actually Septerian. Um, group number three. This is Moss Agate. It also has some little openings here where some crystals have formed, some little caverns. That is called Druzy. And group number four, this is Appetite. So these are all palm stones. You hold them in your hand and you can rub them like that. <laughs> um, so Blue Appetite for group number four. On one of my readings, I also ask you if you could be any food, what food would you be? It came up, there was a story where that was asked. So, but I would love to hear from you. So comment down below if you could be any food, what would you be? I would be a potato. So there you go. <laughs> you know, because you know, French fries, hash browns, vodka, potato. That's, that's for me. Anyway, if you are still with me rambling on here and you because you're not sure which to pick, I'm going to do a breathing exercise and I do this in all of my pick it cards. So I'm just going to get loose here, get calm, go ahead and close my eyes, take a deep breath in and release. We're going to release out any tension. We're going to set the intention that you will receive the messages you need to receive. Take another deep breath in and release. Just be here in the moment. Go ahead and open your eyes and wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group for you. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope you have an amazing day and let's get to your reading. Hello group one, if you picked this stone, which is, well, it's a palm stone, but it's also a palm stone of Labradorite. And it's believed to have magical powers that influence positive changes. So if you're drawn to this, I feel like you are the positive change. I feel like if you <laughs> want the positive change in your life, um, you're the person who's gonna have to step up and be the positive change in your life. It also works on the throat, the crown, and the third eye chakras. So this could talk about 
um, you know, higher levels of, uh, of being. Uh, somebody who's very spiritual, you probably somebody who people look at and think is connected. Um, and you probably have something to say. If you're not a channel, if you don't do something like, I mean, I would assume since you're here, you're drawn to um, tarot cards or things like that. Um, I feel like if you wanted to do something like that, you could pick it up very easily. And the first card that comes out for you is lifting the veil. So this um, goes along with with uh, your connection here to the Labradorite. 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 Um, <laughs> this is questioning everything and anything unaligned must go. Um, many times when we talk about lifting the veil, we talk about the veil thinning um, around the time of Halloween um, and it is between this world and the next so it's interesting that this stone also works with those chakras um, like the third eye the crown the throat chakra those higher chakras that connect you that can can connect you with the spirit realm um, with that that which cannot be seen um, it it's like a deep knowing and you are the cheese. <laughs> that's an interesting thing that's coming in here for me. Um, this is crazy because it's a memory from years and years ago. So it's a, it's a special message for some of you that you're the cheese, the, the thing in the center, kind of in that grilled cheese, that binds everything together, that moves one thing to another. Um, in your, so I'm talking in like spiritually here, but in your um, everyday life, you might bring two things together. And the reason I'm thinking about you're the cheese is we were asked in some sort of communications class, like what food, if we were a food, what food would you be? So you can think about that right now as well and let me know in the comments what food you would be. But this story has to do with um, a, a lovely young woman who stood up and she said she would be cheese. And the reason that she said that was she learned sign language. So she brought two different worlds together. She was that person in the middle, that interpreter in the middle. And that's how I see you here lifting the veil. You're in the middle. You're bringing things together. You're binding because cheese melts and binds. And, um, you know, the cheese. What else can we know here about group one and why they are so attractive? Okay, we get the hermit reversed. Oop. <laughs> uh, we have a page of cups reversed. Oh, we got two out here, so we'll take them. We'll take all of the flyers because they flew out pretty easily. Um, we have the Hermit, we've got the four, four of Wands here, um, Judgment and Page of Cups. The reason I stopped at the Four of Wands is because in this particular card, it almost looked like the Five of Wands to me. Um, and that is, there's a huge difference between the Four of Wands and the Five of Wands. The Four of Wands is a card of stability but I picked this deck for a reason. So um, when I, I just, I feel like this goes more along with your alignment. The five of wands is when people are in competition with each other and they are, they're beating each other up a little bit and maybe they're not necessarily on the same page. I feel like when we've got judgment in reverse, the hermit in reverse and page of cups here in reverse, that you don't maybe necess necessarily at this point to see yourself as um, lifting the veil. I don't think you realize um, the power that you have. I don't, because I think that you are a natural born leader. Um, you need to spend a little bit more time inside your own, you know, 
opening up your own heart chakras. Um, you know, I was talking about the, the crown, the third eye chakra, probably the third eye chakra for sure. But I also often see like the, the hermit with our heart chakra. We need to follow our heart first. And then that, um, I'm like <laughs> moving my hands up my body, which you can't see. Um, but that will align the rest of those chakras so that you can use your voice. You can use your um, your knowing, you can use your intellect to really um, help those around you. I think others see that in you and maybe you don't see that in yourself. Um, judgment here. We've got judgment in reverse. And I think that, you know, judgment is about a calling. This lifting the veil is following that calling. The, I mean, you're drawn here to the Labradorite for a reason. You might even um, use that uh, stone if you if you are so called to use crystals to help you develop um, your voice a little bit to help you develop your intellect to help you develop develop that connection to the um, to your higher self to the universe because you are very connected to the universe. And right now I feel like with the page of cups in reverse, I feel like you're not really sure how to do that, which is okay. You know, we are seekers. We need to go and find, but that is what's holding you back is the not knowing. Um, first of all, it's just kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> um, you know, you just see what sticks because we're all different. So you can listen to somebody else's journey and get inspiration from that. But I feel like you will need to get some connections to it for yourself. So it's just about starting, I think, for you. And you're going to find your way. But really, it's a very personal journey. Um, the hermit and judgment. And I feel like you know, other people are drawn to you and feel like you're connected. And at the moment, I think that you're just letting um, any intrusive thoughts that want to come in um, kind of, you're just allowing those intrusive thoughts. It's interesting when we talk about that third eye chakra too, because Sometimes when I, you know, we're, we're, none of us are immune to these, this negative thinking, intrusive thoughts. Um, what it does is hold us back though. And I feel like um, that third eye chakra, s take a moment to think about it. And um, when you have intrusive thoughts, I envision that as like a giant eject button, maybe not giant, but an eject button. And I just tap my third eye chakra and I tell those thoughts, no, I reject those thoughts. You have the capability of doing that, of mastering your own mind. I just think that at the moment you um, may be a little lost with it. And the reason I say that is when we have the Hermit reverse, the Judgment reverse, and the Page of Cups reverse. I think that there are, there's um, amazing growth that is ahead of you that you just are not seeing right now. And I'm glad that we're here talking about it. Okay. Um, and the... <laughs> Seeker. Look at that seeker. I'm glad the seeker comes in over hermit. I'm glad we talked about seeker too. We, we brought this up. Um, I'm almost going to move these over because I want to talk about this one first, victim. Um, there, a lot of times we find ourselves in the victim mentality. Um, I don't feel like this is necessarily an attribute that makes everybody attractive. I feel like it is the overcoming of it that confidence that you gain from it because we all have things that happen in our lives we all have challenges and instead of in sometimes these challenges hold us there for a minute um that happens that's okay forgive yourself for that uh, the light attribute here is prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others so what 
you know, when you are in a victim mentality or you've lived through that, you see through it. And you are more of a champ, because I do feel like there is a champion here of others. Remember that cheese, that binding things, that moving one thing to another, that uh, kind of like the walker in between who helps people um, move from one direction to another. And I feel like you're there to help um, people who have gone through something um, and help them, whether that is through a friendship, um, through, you know, somebody mentioned something on social media and you're like, hey, PM me. I want to talk to you about this. I want to help you through this. Like, I feel like you're the kind of person that would do that because you've been there. You've been through stuff. The shadow attributes here would be playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. Um, and I feel like your the advantage or the thought of personal boundaries here is that when you are helping others, that you don't get dragged down. I think a lot of empaths need to think about personal boundaries. Empaths, and you're, I'm getting some empathic vibes here. Empaths are people who can read energy of others. A lot of times they take on those energy of others and they will, even if you haven't been through something, like you'll feel it from others. I was, it, what's great about that is then you can need to start to figure out how to identify when that is from others and then you can like hey you know what's what's going on can we talk can I help you um what is it that we can help um transmute here what is it that I can help you do um is it and it's so much just somebody willing to to see them and to you know, the attention. That's why I think that um, the victim mentality is very attractive to a lot of people who um, stay in it longer than they should, stay in it longer than is better for them because they get the attention from it. But, and that's the hard part, right? That's, you don't know if it's, if it's good to feed that attention or if you're there to just really help. But that's where um, your, your connection to those higher realms, your connection to that knowing, um, helps you. And then we have the seeker and we talked about seeking. We talked about, um, the light attribute here is the thirst for wisdom and truth, whatever they are. I feel like it's really connected here to this hermit. I kind of feel like, um, this whole reading is about you breaking out of your shell and you becoming the person that you are meant to be and the, the finding that inner strength that, um, everybody around you knows that you have, and you may not know, you might be the only one, um, who doesn't know, but we're going to seek it. We're going to, um, like this page of cups here. How do we know, uh, seekers become finders and finders become, um, masters of this. And I feel like you're at a very, very beginning stage. Like you are seeking. That's why you're here. What are you seeking? That knowledge, that thirst, that like, you know, that you have a role to play here. You know that you're different. You know that you are somebody, you're a muse. You're somebody who helps others. The seeker, a thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. Shadow attributes would be inability to commit to path once found. And I think we're kind of at that position. Either you found a path and you're not really sure about going down it, or you're just like, not sure of a path at all. You, you're looking for a path. We'll get a couple more cards and then we'll bring out some charms. It's been a minute since I played with this deck. And it's just got some fun, um, fun words here. Uh, concert, concertiveness, uh, focus distractedness, 
and proxility, uh, prox, prox, um, but the conservativeness. <laughs> See, they're fun words. Um, the oh, these come from like uh, words from the like late eighteen hundreds, I believe, and this is talking about you know the hermit focuses the hermit focuses i feel like the chakras are really important but we got to get your heart chakra in order first we have to get you knowing yourself i think that's a big part of this judgment too because judgment is a is, is like a level up but you can't move forward until you know who you are and it's time to focus on who you are. Um, the four of wands, four is a number of stability. I feel like you need to trust in your ambitions. Because I feel like there's a little bit of ambition here. I feel like there, you know, and wands are a suit of action. It's time to take some action. It's time to take that path. But when we have all of these cards here in reverse, I feel like there's, you're questioning where to go. And the thing is like, you cannot, there's a little bit of procrastination here as well, because I feel like once you, so the, the great thing about procrastinators is yes, they hold back, they hold back, they hold back. But ultimately once they do move, like they just get the job done. The fact that they can <laughs> procrastinate and still get it done is is part of the reason why people procrastinate in the first place. But I feel like there's a lot of things to open up for you in moving, um, in, in following your path. The other thing to notice here in this conservativeness card is that we have the ram. The ram is connected to Aries, which is connected to this fire energy. It is about you know, getting into that kind of like battle, um, because Aries is, is the god of war and, um, he cannot be stopped. Um, so in your, your battle mode, it can be very, very productive. It can be very destructive as well, but I feel like you can control it into a very productive place. And then this emotiveness, this is attraction, and this has the, um, this has, again, kind of, they're goats, but they're like long-haired goats, so I feel like it is kind of um, a, uh, a continuation here of the ram, but there's also a snake. Um, snakes are very misunderstood. I kind of feel like, um, cause they were actually in, well, and even in, um, I mean, they're one of the 12 animals in the Chinese Zodiac. You may be born under the year of the snake. You should check that out, but they are. And when I come into this procrastination too, when we, what we were talking about, I feel like you're somebody who others, like they don't see the work behind they don't see the effort things that you do often seem effortless that you can handle things in a way that other people like because you do think things out um that's an advantage to procrastination is because a lot of times you're making a plan um it is time to take action though because you you can sit and take plan make plans all day long uh, plans are great, but when they hold you back from continuing your goal, and this is this is like it's time to become that seeker. It's time to to continue on that goal. But there is a certain level of attraction. I feel like law of attraction. I feel like people come to you who need you. Um, they they seek you out, or you find them. There's a level of attractiveness there, and I feel like. Um, physically attractive as well maybe in an unconventional sense let's see what we have for charms i'm just gonna right here okay charms wise interesting we have a q Q 
Q-N-L-Y, so those might mean something to you. Made with love. I feel like what you do is um, very loving. Um, the pent pentacle here, which suggests, and then the, we've got the palm here. I feel like, um, you know, law of attraction is not just about people being attracted to you. I feel like um, you also have a way of um, attracting wealth, especially when you are who you are yourself, when you are yourself. Um, the lion here is strength. We have a butterfly. I feel like the butterfly um, and even the spider and the unicorn kind of speak to like a beauty and a magic behind you. I feel like you kind of come off as innocent. Um, just a random kind of message here with the bicycle that you could benefit from some physical exercise. Pentacle would speak to that as well. Don't let your connection to those higher chakras, that throat, that eye, and that that um, because you're you're between two worlds really um, you're between the physical and the mental world you're opening that veil so don't lose your um, connection and you might need to do some grounding exercises um, to be really kind of happy here on earth uh, I love the star here it talks about hope and moving forward um, the Spider is also somebody who is very um, industrious, can do a lot of things, can create a lot of things. The, um, the little canary here, sing your own song. And I also kind of feel like this, um, the seahorse. Seahorses are really interesting creatures. I feel like you have a lot of surprises behind you like there's depth to you um you might I, in the cards themselves it's like kind of like hey you know it's time to get moving it's time to like shine it's time to show who you really are seahorses it just like the 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 um the male seahorses are the ones who get pregnant um and I, it's just it's just, you know, like one of those little surprising kind of things that I'm not saying that that you are pregnant. <laughs> I'm just saying that um, there's a lot of surprises. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of especially um, emotionally depth. There's a lot of caring here. So that is what I have for you, group one. What did I ask you? I asked you a question to let me know. Oh yeah, what, uh, what, um, I'm, I'm interested to know what food, if you could be a food, what kind of food would you be? If you were offended that I, um, called you the cheese, <laughs> let me know. And I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group two. So this is, um, Serpentine Palmstone. Um, sometimes called new jade. It is very much connected to the earth. So um, very practical and um, very grounding. So there we are, group two. Then we have the first card that comes out for you. We have the seas of Mintanka. Seeing potential, um, bringing unconscious to light. So the seas of Mint Mintaka, um, Mintaka is a planet which is believed to have great seas. Um, we're talking esoterically here. But when you get this card, it is showing that you see great potential in other people. You see the light in other people, probably because you have great potential and light yourself. It is a wonderful card to get and extremely positive to get in a, a a reading such as this. So your situation, um, 
you know, a lot of times we see potential and we're the only ones who see it and we put in a lot of work and effort, um, but this is not only you are seeing it, but other people are seeing that potential, whether that is an investment of your yourself, your time somewhere, your, your investment in other people, um, it is paying off. And the part about bringing the unconscious to light reminds me of Carl Jung, who said that which we do not bring to consciousness appears in our life as fate. So you're probably somebody who because you see things and and you see the potential, but I think you know, you might want to just be cautious. The only thing that I would say is be cautious to to look at the you know, see the see the goods with the bads. But um the good with the bad. But when you see things and you are aware of things, then you, it's not necessarily fate anymore because you understand like that cause and effect relationship. Um, it would be somebody who you would make your own luck, um, basically. So others who can't um, fathom the things that you see or can't uh, reach you at the same depths that you are, <laughs> um, they might just look at you and think that you're lucky. Um, but it's really somebody who makes their own luck. You make your own luck, group two. And, you know, it's funny because I think Jade is, is one of those stones that is seen as lucky or is connected to wealth. Um, so, very interesting here. And none of these cards want to come out. <laughs> Except for the big bundle. Let me just I'm gonna do this. I'm going to shuffle it. We're going to do three piles. Cut the deck. And then we're going to do this. Empress reversed. We've got the three of swords. The world. And then the Knight of Wands. It's interesting that we have the Wands in here because the Knight of Wands is somebody who takes action. Um, and we had that kind of vibe with the first reading as well. We also had the kind of vibe with, with the Empress Reverse. I'm wondering if you, and with the Three of Swords, I'm wondering if you um, have been doubting yourself. Um, you don't, even though you have this great vision, sometimes it doesn't come out the way that you think it will, or it takes longer. I think it takes longer than you think it will. Trust yourself. And I also feel like it's time to, because I feel like you're a very giving person and you know, that obviously makes you very attractive because other people will take, 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 but I feel like you need to retreat into yourself a little bit and give yourself that kind of love. Where you see potential in other people, I feel like you need to invest that time in yourself and see potential in yourself. Um, the world and the Knight of Wands indicate like movement, movement out of this um, energy, especially this Three of Wands energy, where you feel like, um, you know, you have and I almost feel like it's another person, other people, because the Empress here, where you've invested in some time into other people and you see their potential. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't come out the way that you think it does. And you have to back off a little bit. You can't control others. You, you can't make them do what they need to do. But when you're telling them or investing your time and your energy into them, they kind of... Um, give that to you. They kind of give you that responsibility for themselves. And there's nothing but heartache because you're like, I see them, this potential, and I know that they can do this. You, I feel like you have to go in, 
let them know what you see and then back off and allow them to work things at their own pace. I feel like you're correct um, in, in what you see, but right now you're just shouldering the burden of it. You have to let them get invested into your vision for them and allow them to complete it. It's kind of like the give a man a fish, teach a man a fish kind of thing. You've taught them how to fish, but then you continue to give them fish and they are, they'll take it. And you're like, why aren't you, why aren't you fishing? Why aren't you doing this for yourself? Why aren't you able to, they are able to, you are right. You are correct. Um, there, it's time to, to, to cut this off and it's time to move forward. And it's kind of like, we're talking about, you know, the, the, this reading, what makes you attractive is yeah, you giving, giving, giving that is super attractive. It doesn't help you out that much though. So I feel like you shouldn't be so worried or concerned about the way that other people see you as you should be as worried and concerned and how you see yourself. It's time to turn your potential onto yourself. And that's what the, the Empress here in reverse talks about. The Empress is so loving and kind and she is so giving, like she is the quintessential mother, give, 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 give. But it's time to, to let those birds fly. It's time to kick them out of the nest. It's time, and you don't have to be mean about it. It's just time to focus on yourself. This um, cycle has ended. The cycle of you um, moving forward in a new inspiration has come. And trust yourself. Um, I feel like um, I'm getting a lot of Cancer vibes here. Cancer the uh, the crab. Um, well, water vibes in general. Cancer Pisces um, Scorpio. Um, Scorpio wouldn't have a problem kicking them out of the nest though. <laughs> but there's a lot of um, emotional attachment. There's a lot of um, here. And of course, even though this is the Three of Swords, there's the underlying current of the Three of Swords is an emotional attachment. I'm uh, shuffling here as we're speaking. Ah, interesting. Thief and Samaritan. Almost a, uh, a Robin Hood vibe. <laughs> um, steal from the rich, give to the poor. So thief sheds light on potential wealth within you that can never be stolen. Shadow attribute would be stealing money, creative ideas, affection, um, or other powers you think you lack. And I feel like you know, you don't get this card, the Seas of uh, Mintaka, if you lack anything. You don't. You have this great depth. And, and I love the thief in here is seeing value, seeing that value of others. And I don't think that that shadow attribute is really um, in effect here. Other than I feel like you do see value in others. And I want you to look at it through love rather than something that you lack yourself. You are very powerful. And I almost feel like you have um, given so much to others and you've been kind of like this muse to others that you have um, supported them because you may have been afraid to go off and live your own dream. But it's time. It's time. It's transforming here. It's time for you to see your own love, you know, shine that love, that heart um, on yourself and to see the potential in yourself. It's interesting too that the thief comes in and talks about the potential and so does the seas of uh, Mitaka. And then we have Samaritan refines your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. I don't think you would prefer to ignore people. I think you're a little bit more drawn to them than you should be and maybe you should ignore them a little bit now. I think you should put some boundaries up um, and allow them to blossom into their full potential. Um, have you ever seen succulents or cactus? There's certain kind. I have it one sitting here. This why I'm, it, 
but it it uh, it goes with this. So this is a succulent. They thrive off neglect. Like, yeah, I see potential in it, I see beauty in it, but if I'm here every single day watering it, it's not going to bloom. It's not gonna thrive on its own. And I feel like um, you need to know that. You need to know that, um, yes, you, you can be a little bit hands-off now. Um, you don't have to micromanage things. You have to trust others. I feel like, yeah, trust is a big thing. But I feel like it's more because you need to trust yourself. And you are a great... I, I bet, too, that you would make an amazing... Like somebody in HR. Somebody who finds talent. Uh, some sort of talent scout. Like, you would be amazing at that. At seeing other people's talents. The shadow attribute here of the Samaritan is... Um, Oh, exacting appreciation and recognition for the help you offer. So I kind of feel like, um, you know, sometimes you're like, hey, you know what? You just see a random person. You should be a model. <laughs> That's great. And you're seeing that potential. But sometimes people are so like in, in their head about stuff, like they don't even see the full potential that you see. Ooh, interesting. Um, and, y you know, you just have to kind of like let it go and let it float out there a little bit so that people can recognize, recognize it themselves and really, um, you know, just trust that you're right. You don't, you just make that judgment call, let other people know, you know, I see, you know, I, I believe in you, I see in you, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm your cheerleader here, but you have to actually go and do the work. I can't do it for you because if you try to do the work for them, you're just going to be in this, in the cycle of this three of swords and the world talks about we're breaking that cycle. You can just swoop in and um, give somebody some inspiration and then leave. And I was talking about trust. We've got this no card and intuition, premonition and instinct. I also love the owl on here. And we have um, the different uh, like pollinators, I think, uh, bees and, and such. Um, and I feel like that speaks to the world here. It's a new season. Know and trust. And um, you do have this amazing intuition here. That's what the Seas of uh, Mitaka talks about. Um, and you are very wise as well. And then we've got this uh, veneration, devotion, <laughs> sacrilegiousness, and idolatry with veneration um, this has butterflies on it and this bird is an egret which is known to stand in the physical and spiritual worlds um, this is about the trust the trust in your higher self your higher being your higher knowing um, sometimes I feel like you know things that you shouldn't really know, but you just know. You, you, and that is your trust in yourself here. Okay, I was looking for my charms because I'm going to bring out my charms now. I'm just going to throw them in here. What else do we need to let to know about? What makes them attractive? What else do we need to know about what makes them attractive? We get F. I'm feeling like F is for fun. Um, we have a bat. Um, I feel like your voice is really important. We had a lion last. You know, I feel like you guys, you guys are connected to the last group. Um, we have a heart here that's made with love. 
feel like what you do is very loving and kind. I feel like you love to see people transform and transformation. Um, this is a, um, I just lost it. <laughs> what is this? Their luck though. Um, dragonfly, dragonfly, a dragonfly is luck. Dragonfly is luck, but you make your own luck and you have the strength to do that. The fox is about craftiness. I feel like you know where you're going. You're steering your own way. I also feel like the, um, the bat kind of relates to that as well. That, uh, let's see if you can see these better. Um, the, the, the going your way, the, the finding your way here in, in unconventional ways with the um, sonar here. And then a spider, the spider is very industrious. The spider creates and makes things beautiful. Um, I feel like you don't always trust yourself, but you should. Uh, especially when you use your heart chakra and you use the love. Interesting that we get the heart and then we had the heart over here on the thief, like that heart of gold and the, the butterfly um, about transformation. And then we have the world here. It's time to move into that new direction. So that is what I have for you, group two. Please let me know what your favorite charm was and what you feel like you are called to. And let me know if you feel like sharing. I would love to know what you feel like is a diamond in the rough. Um, is it another person? Did you see opportunities in like crypto? Um, but I want you to look at yourself and believe in yourself in the way that you believe in others. So that's what I have for you, group two. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group three. This is Green Moss Agate. Um, I'm just going to put this over here, and the number three, and the first card that comes out for you is New Earth. It's happening. Keep holding your vision. I see somebody who is almost radical in their vision and um, I don't want to say fanatical, but you know, very determined. So there's a very determined nature behind you. It doesn't mean that you ha don't have doubts. Of course you do. Everybody does. But you go on despite that. And there's definitely this determination, definitely this idea of a creation and a creator and being a part of that and holding that vision. What is that saying? There's a saying about, because this is, this is about planting seeds. There's a saying about like the person who plants an olive tree, like they never live to eat those olives, but they have that great vision for the future and not only for themselves and creating a better world, a better life, a better earth, a new earth, but for other generations. So this is very forward thinking, very generational thinking. It's interesting that you have this with moss agate because moss agate is a grounding stone. It's very much connected to the earth. You know, we have the, the greens and the whites here um, connected to the earth. But one of the metaphysical properties or things that uh, that is talked about with green moss agate is that it was used with midwives, that it was used in the, the birthing process. Um, because, and, and when I'm talking about new earth and birthing a new earth and creating a new earth, um, I just find that interesting. I imagine, you know, that's, that's what I do here. That's why I'm finding things and connections interesting. Okay. That was just a big bunch of cards. So this is what we're gonna do. We are going to shuffle and then we are going to put in different decks and then cut into threes, cut in half. If you were in Queen of Cups, 
Um, if you were here with me, that's what I would have you do. All right. Queen of Cups, the Moon, Ace of Swords, and Nine of Pentacles. So when I said something to you about having this great vision, but it's okay if you have doubts, um, that's what all the cards here in reverse is telling me. That you have doubts. You have doubts in yourself. And you really shouldn't. Um, the Nine of Pentacles, man, that is a card about, um, cre you know, it's pentacles, earth, connected to the earth. It is about creation. It's creating wealth. It's creating, you know, financial stability. It's doing it on your own. It's interesting that this new earth, this person walking here, a lot of times I feel like you feel like you're on your own. Um, I think there are other people, though, who really see you and appreciate you. They see you and appreciate this love that you, you give out. Um, there is a certain something that je ne sais quoi here with the moon, that something that you can't quite put your hand on, you can't quite put your finger on about you, about what you do, about, um, about you know, the, the ideas rattling around your head. You may not always know exactly where they come from. Ace of Swords, we got to cut through that clutter. We've got to bring those new ideas in. It's new inspiration um, to really believe in yourself and to believe in your past path forward. And this ability for you to create this wealth for yourself and others. The Queen of Cups would indicate that you have a lot of people that you really love and they are feeling it from you. Um, that heart chakra is very much developed. Um, they may not, you, you might have your doubts though again because these cards came in in reverse. Uh, but I feel like when I get a, uh, a, a reading like this where everything comes in in reverse, that it's just something you're not quite seeing, not something that you're not quite believing in yourself. And again, it's okay to be in that space. We all have um, doubts. We all have, um, you know, worries and concerns. And especially when you have this radical vision of the future and how you want um, to see love and how you want to see your family and love others and this um, idea of this wealth that you're creating. A lot of times our path seems very lonely and you might be the only one on it. Um, but it is that dedication that comes out for you um, that that will help you push forward and help you prevail prevail. Interesting, we have the alchemist over here over the nine of pentacles, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we're going to start here with the networker. Light attributes enhances unity through the sharing of information. Um, right here, ace of swords, sharing of information, speaking, communicating. Engenders social awareness and empathy. You know, we've got the queen of cups here as well as that would speak to empathy. Shadow attributes conveys information only for personal gain and spreads fear and falsehoods. Um, you know, I'm not really paying too much attention to these shadow attributes. However, when all of the cards came in in reverse, I just have to question that a little bit. Make sure that you're, you know, a little bit more altruistic with the information that you're sharing. It might be because you're afraid that what you have to share, what you have to say is not going to be well received. Um, that you might, when you speak, because your ideas, I don't want to say are radical, but your ideas are not the social norm. Your ideas are transformational. And I feel like you do that with love though. So, Trust yourself, and sometimes you may run into somebody who looks at you like you're crazy. Um, but you're planting seeds, you're a seed planter. Come back in six months, come back in a week, come back, um, and and I feel like these people are gonna tell you, Yeah, you know what? You were you're, you're challenging their their thoughts of what's normal and and 
the world around them of, of what's real. The alchemist light attribute is transformation of base motives and goals into golden wisdom. I love it over here over the nine of pentacles. And then the shadow attributes is misuse of the power and knowledge that come through spiritual practice. I don't feel like that is necessarily you. I feel like um, if anything, the shadow attribute on the alchemist is believing in yourself, believing that you can um, become this, believing that you can create. And really, there's a lot of great creator cards here. Um, some of it is, is mysticism. I'm wondering if, you know, the moon is trusting in your intuition. The moon is trusting in the that the depth of yourself that people can't see it's very much connected kind of to this new moon um image here of of walking into this this water she's walking wading into her intuition she's trusting herself um she's doing it for the purpose of creating a, a better environment a better world a better society let's see what else we can get out here self-esteem yeah yes we need to improve your self-esteem I hope this does it the nine of pentacles over here <laughs> it's so funny this this little panda is eating um uh bamboo but it's almost it's almost like he's just smoking a cigar, <laughs> which is what we would do in victory and, and days past. Maybe you still do that. Combativeness. Um, I, I feel like the combative, it's interesting that we have the armadillo and the cactus here on combativeness. Self-esteem, we have the horse here with this flower. I'm not sure what flower this is, but I feel like um, your self-esteem is blooming. Just keep going. Just keep going down your path. Trust yourself. We also, this looks like a hot air balloon here. Um, just let your ideas carry you. And I love the self-esteem with the horse. I think the horse is so majestic and beautiful. I think people see you that way. Um, just it's about seeing yourself and trusting yourself in that way and not in a conceited way combativeness here you know you don't have to I, f I feel like you maybe you don't trust in your vision because you do get that feedback from others sometimes that is not always the most positive there's some pushback when you have these I don't want to again I don't want to say radical ideas but these ideas that are a little bit different um you're and you're doing it from your heart you're doing it from a very loving place you're you know it's your intuition to put those ideas out there you're planting these seeds you're putting it out there um sometimes you get pushback from people because they don't have the same background as you or they don't see the same vision of you or you know you're questioning what they've always been taught and what they've always been told you're pushing against some of these social norms sometimes i love the armadillo here that thick skin i also love the cactus that prickliness um and underneath the cactus is uh is is water um, that you can actually eat some cactus um, in in the desert if you're lost without water like they it, it's just a boundary to protect themselves is what I'm seeing with that cactus let's get out some charms let's see what the charms say so here are our charms just get in here and mix them up. And I'm, just, I'm not going to pull a ton out because I always believe less is more. <laughs> Look at this, the hot air balloon. Oh, flag. Mermaid. Mermaid is the queen of cups over here. So a lot of this is just confirming what we have talked about. Uh, look at this, a cactus. Uh, a cactus that goes along with that. Um, 
a little bunny anchor. You are the anchor. There is a bit of luck in here. This says, wishes do come true. So hold your vision. And this looks like a little salamander. Um, where's the cactus? I'm gonna put the cactus and the salamander together. Hold your vision here. Wishes come true. We have a star, we have a starfish. Um, I said that the mermaid is the queen of cups. The, the queen of cups, you know, is very loving. Uh, the flag here, very interesting that we have a flag. Uh, it, it speaks to a level of kind of like nation building, kind of what kind of flag do you fly, uh, but also changing that that nation or the idea of, of nation. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, we're evolving, we're moving, we're changing, you're part of that. Um, and you're part of the, the creation of something new. Um, I also see like, you know, this hot air balloon is over here on the self-esteem, but it, it is also related to um, perspective, creating a different perspective. I think you show people different perspectives. We have two dogs here, loyalty, be loyal to your vision. Um, the We have a bunny and we've got these speak to luck. There's a certain amount of luck and anchors. We've got two anchors. So I feel like repeated elements are important. Um, anchor is you are an anchor for some people um, that may drift away. Um, I just see you as somebody in, in a very positive way, an anchor to anchor in positive energy, to anchor in um, you know, your vision. Don't lose that. I also feel like anchors, even though, you know, they, I mean, they keep a boat in, in one spot. So I feel like it's very grounding energy around the anchor. And then we have a cat, just warm and fuzzy feelings, love here. And that's what I have with the, with the, um, the charm. So very interesting that, cause like, um, a lot of the charms in here went back to uh, to confirm the cards that we talked about. And I just feel like, you know, raising the self-esteem and, and maybe even, you know, seeing yourself in a, from a different perspective. If you met yourself, what would you think? Because I feel like you are kinder to other people than you are to yourself. That's kind of been a theme through these these readings so far and I feel like just keep just keep swimming just keep swimming just keep holding your vision so that's what I have for you group three I hope that you have a fantastic day thank you so much for being here with me and I will see you in the next reading Last but not least, group number four and Blue Appetite. Blue Appetite is used in um, meditation. It's used for self-reflection. It is for the third eye and throat chakra. Um, so if you are drawn to this, you may have something important to say. You may know, you know, you might need to activate that third eye chakra or, um, you know, it might be something that you have been working on. The Great Severing, Mars Energy, Anger, Conflict, Softening to Love. So this is interesting that this comes out and I'm like telling you this is part of what makes you attractive because anger and all emotions they're here for a reason. We need to pay attention to them. Anger can be very constructive. It can be destructive, it can be destructive and constructive. And um, we are gonna talk about how you are using anger to be constructive. We're using it to soften to love. Um, it is normal, and, and sadly enough, sorry, but it's normal that we hurt. It's normal that we feel anger. I feel like though you're somebody who is like cute when they're angry. Um, and, and meaning that, you know, you get angry about a situation, 
but it's used in a productive way that you push, it, it uses you, you know, that you could, that there's a lot that you will put up with, but when it finally hits, um, it's like, you know, I would almost say hell hath no fury, but it's because you're, I don't want to say on a war path or a rampage, but it's because, and it's not indiscriminate. It's very much to change, to move, to motivate, to push you, to be better, to do better, to find better, to make other people be better. Um, y you know, it acknowledges that we have different difficult emotions and situations and conflicts and wounds and fears that cause anxiety and pain. But, and this is a big but here, softening to love, that love part, because we use it in a constructive way. We use it to show love. We use it that in spite of everything, um, we are still here, we're fighting, we still prevail. So we're going to put this in three categories here. Um, yeah, that's how I want it. And then, there we go and then split the deck. And then we're just gonna pull off the top here. Lovers, that goes back to that self-reflection. Nine of Swords, Justice Reversed, and Knight of Swords. Interesting, we have so much swords and so much communication going on here. You might be an air sign. Air signs are our Geminis. Uh, Libras or Aquarius. And, and it's funny too because um, these are two major arcana cards. The lovers are is related to Gemini and uh, Justice is related to our Libras. So you might want to look at those placements. Um, but Nine of Swords, Knight of Swords, Communication. Lovers, and, and look at all of these cards where we have more than one figure or we have multiple figures here. Um, so I feel like you're somebody who works well with others, that even if you are angry and these other people are probably angering you, um, that you're you're helping them um, or they're helping you. And it's just that whole like self-reflection here. The lovers talks about self-reflection. Gemini talks about self-reflection. That's why we have the, the twins. It's not because Geminis are two-faced. Other people would say that, not I. It's because we have the twins. We have them that multiple versions of ourselves. We have that kind of play off of ourselves. And I feel like your emotions are huge in helping you to, to see yourself in the world, to play off yourself in the world. Um, justice is reversed here. I feel like that might be part of your anger. That's seeing the injustice. That That's why... You know, we talk about anger as movement. We talk about that anger as long as it can be productive. There's nothing productive about going into a riot situation. Yes, everybody there is angry, but um, what happens is you destroy things and you just, you do, you're not hitting your target that way. And I feel like that's the Knight of Swords here is somebody who goes off and does something. So it's a reminder here that we're, we need to, like in this Nine of Swords where this one person is kind of falling into despair and either that's you or you're the person helping. Um, but remember that there are other people um, affected by your anger, um, that you need to harness it and use it in a positive way and open up to love. And a lot of times we need to open up um, and love the people who are making us angry, that they're a reflection of ourselves, that they are showing us and revealing our triggers, that they are showing us ourselves. Um, the justice here, we need to love um, the people who we feel have have uh, been wronged in in society, it, and uh, it's interesting that we have that sword because it's part of communication. We really need to walk in somebody else's shoes to understand them. Um, hero, heroine, and Midas, miser. Interesting, interesting that. <laughs> 
<laughs> we were talking about Gemini. We were talking about the duality and we get two cards that are kind of, um, well, the hero heroine, yes, but you know, we got the masculine fem feminine in play there. And then we've got the Midas and the miser. So hero heroine, light attributes, passion for a journey of personal empowerment. And we don't start off with a journey into personal empowerment unless we have a catalyst and anger is an amazing catalyst for change for movement for growth uh, the shadow attribute here is escapism and the false sense of heroism so you know again that love i feel like comes in to help us guide our way and guide us in the right way and to see the ref you know see ourselves through the reflection of others then we have the midas slash miser, light attributes, entrepreneurial or creative abilities to turn anything to gold, and then delight in sharing your riches. And then the shadow attributes would be hoarding money and emotions, obsessive fear of losing your wealth. Um, that obsessive fear about losing something or losing your wealth, um, self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're too focused on a negative, and I kind of see that here in the judgment in reverse, if you're too focused in that negative, um, sometimes you only see that negative and sometimes you manifest that negative because you're so focused on it. So we want to be very careful with this because there's a lot of power here. There's a lot of power within you. There's a lot of power within your heart. So you need to be very, very careful where you focus that attention where you focus that power i've got these other cards here and then we'll we'll get two of these and then we will get charms out so you have to be very careful <sighs> constructiveness yes and then this one is suavity agreeableness um we're just going with the the um, upright version of here because disingenuineness and uh, condescension is kind of like the shadow attributes that come out. So suavity, you, you know, sometimes we have to uh, consciously choose to be agreeable, to use our persuasion or persuasiveness to be agreeable to others and then um constructiveness i love the spider in here the spider is building oh and then on this one is the chameleon i you know oftentimes the um the gemini is is very chameleon like an aspect of this um lover's card is yes you know working with other people it doesn't necessarily ne mean romantic love and that's not the type of reading we're doing anyway we're talking about you know attraction to yourself of course um but attractiveness um so that you can show yourself self-love to gain your own your own confidence in in you and who you are and to celebrate you is the intent of these readings so the lovers is like an elevation it is a leveling up your game and i feel like when we go from anger to love we level up our game game as well and it brings it into this realm of constructiveness it brings us into like anybody can destroy things we it's so easy to destroy things we are builders we're building things it's much harder to build things too um, but we have to do it with love so here are our charms. I'm just giving it a good, like, so that we can pull out some charms here for group four. And I want, I'm not going to pull out a ton. Less is more. Look at the heart. We've got the wrench here, so builders, that, that building, that creation. Um, we've got a couple of bats, which I think is important. 
Um, the Eiffel Tower, I think, also speaks towards building uh, this anchor, anchoring in your energy. Uh, bees. <laughs> bees are builder. Um, I love the rocking horse. The rocking horse reminds me of our uh, childhood. And um, I kind of think when, as we progress, we need to remember our inner child. Um, and then I think there's a level of ingenuity with this wrench and also this octopus. And then we've got the, you know, like a be a busy bee. Um, singing, I think, can help you be more constructive and bring you out of negativity. Um, this bunny, I feel like, is here for luck and um, luck and fortune. Uh, the anchor, you are the anchor. You have to you have to be steady and strong and anchor into maybe your childhood here with the um, with the rocking horse. The, I'm just looking at your cards here. The um, mermaid would speak about, I would see her as like the queen of, um, queen of cups. You know, we got the anchor and the mermaid. Um, so love comes back in those two. Um, and then we've got the moon, the moon and stars, like shoot for the moon and stars. But you need a direction. The Knight of Swords needs a direction to go into. And I feel like your direction is based on, you need to listen to your heart. You need to listen to love. You need to, to really do a lot of self-reflection in um, others. Pay attention to your triggers. Pay attention to this, this anger and harness this anger to help you move you into this direction. The Knight of Swords is somebody who moves and he moves quickly and swiftly and it's almost like a swift justice, but we need to do it in a constructive way. And we want the Midas touch here. You, you know, that's part of the constructiveness, moving in a way where you are creating, you are the entrepreneur here with the the spider is a very creative energy. And then the, um, just remember, because I, I kind of feel like this agreeableness here is just kind of like a, hey, yes, you do have this great capacity for anger. You do have this great capacity to, um, I don't want to say tear things down, but you can do that. You can be very destructive. Like anger can be very destructive. That's why we need to bring in the love. Um, Nine of Swords, I didn't touch on this more than seeing like you helping somebody out of their negative thinking, their negative dreams, the anxiety, or having help having somebody help you. It's a very kind of reciprocal energy here. You could be either or. Um, you could know how hard it is to escape negativity and anger, and that's why you are helping others. Or because, you know, that whole idea of pay it forward because somebody helped you. Um, and the chameleon is kind of like, ref again, reflecting back what others see. Because when you see them getting angry, when you see them getting anxious, when you see them following down a hole, that you can um, reflect your own uh, experience to them show them your experience. That's how you help others. And that's part of your charm and beauty is you, you know, you know, your shadow self, you've seen it. You've seen that anger, you know how you can help others out of it. And you choose the, um, you choose love. So that's what I have for you, group four. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I will see you in the next reading.